ABC tonight. A severe thunderstorm watch covers portions of the state. A look at full one live Doppler radar next. I'm Bob Floss in Pulaski County School District. One phone call away from having a new superintendent or one phone call away from beginning the search all over again. The call could come at any minute. I'm Isaiah Carey. What should come first in the school districts? Athletics or academic excellence? This is News 4 at 6, where the news comes first. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Barnes. And I'm Betsy Pilgrim. It's been a stormy day across Arkansas. And our new forewarned storm team has been following the action. Meteorologist John Champion joins us from the Storm Center now. John? Well, Steve and uh, Betsy, we've been seeing lines of thunderstorms moving through the natural state this afternoon, and we're finally seeing the last couple of lines moving to eastern portions of the state right now. And that is some very good news as the severe weather threat has ended from uh, Little Rock and points westward. As a matter of fact, skies may start to clear later on this evening across western sections of the state. The latest look now at full one live Doppler radar. As we scan across Arkansas right now, we're looking at uh, some lines of thunderstorms across north central portions of the state and also some pretty good storms moving into uh, Monroe County at the present time but the severe thunderstorm warnings that we have in effect right now include Sharp and Northern Independence County. You can see some very strong storms from Cherokee Village back down through Batesville. You folks in Newark, Jacksonport, Newport, Tuckerman, and Imboden all in the path of these storms as they move quickly on off to the northeast at around 40 miles an hour. Severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for eastern Arkansas. We'll look at that and talk more about a pretty nice forecast coming up in just a little while. Steve? All right, John Champion, thank you. Police at Conway say this afternoon's heavy rains were a factor in a traffic smash-up in which a motorist was killed. Investigators say an RV hydroplaned on Highway 65 at mid-afternoon. Sliding into that wreckage were several other vehicles, including a patrol car driven by Deputy Tim Robinson. Robinson was taken to the hospital along with three others. The person fatally injured was a civilian, though again his name and the names of the other injured have not been released. Well, if actions do speak louder than words, the Pulaski County School Board may have met its new superintendent this weekend. His name is Gary Smith. Bob Clausen joins us now with details. Bob? Well, Betsy, you know, something official sometime tomorrow within the hour the district notified us of an announcement that they will make Tuesday afternoon. Pulaski County is not the only district after Smith. The Springfield School District in Missouri is also trying to hire him. But after a weekend trip to Little Rock, one Smith chose to extend in today. Board members say that they are hopeful they have their man. I'm just, I'm just bubbling now, knowing that he's going to call me in a minute and say yes. That is an enthusiastic school board president. A call taking the job of Pulaski County means the 54-year-old Smith, currently a senior executive for the South Carolina Department of Education, will be turning down a $140,000 offer out of Springfield, Missouri, accepting Pulaski County's $114,000 a year salary. The school board meets Tuesday night and is eager to move forward or take a step back if indeed that's the case. It's not going to put us in a real bad position because we have 12 other candidates. They were all good, but we just eliminated down to that one, and I feel we can go back in the pool and pull either one. And now, Smith is said to have spent Monday in Little Rock possibly looking at homes. Tatum says that she told him Saturday that she needed to hear from him this afternoon. And as we mentioned earlier, the district did notify us they will be making an announcement tomorrow regarding this issue, Betsy. Now, Bob, a lot of people would say he's probably going to take the higher offer. If he does, go ahead and take the job here. How did the comp county compete with that higher offer? Well, the school board president told me that uh, she certainly doesn't want to get into a war with the Springfield district, but she feels that the district here does a better job of selling itself. Uh, through means of stability, the condition of the schools, past and present achievements, things of that nature, Betsy. And Arkansas is a great place to live. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. There's a movement in North Little Rock that could change the way many high school athletes spend their days. Less time with academics, more time at practice. Isaiah Carey joins us live from North Little Rock now. Isaiah? Well, Steve, a group of parents and Booster Club members here in North Little Rock feel that student athletes should have the last class period of each day, five days a week, dedicated to practicing their sport instead of hitting the books. But some disagree with that. Whether it's shooting hoops on the court or running for a touchdown on the football field, North Little Rock High School has excelled and the district has the awards to prove it. But with North Little Rock High School principal Greg Thompson, education comes first, even though he acknowledges athletics are important. He says there are positives and negatives to devoting the final class of the day solely to athletics. If you double block athletics, then you also 
limit students to the number of uh, academic classes that they can choose. Uh, there's financial factors that have to be figured in. If you double block athletics, it obviously costs more. If the last period of school was devoted to athletics, the district would have to hire additional teachers to fill the slots coaches leave behind. And spending more money and putting athletics before education bothers some parents, while others agree in North Little Rock. Well, I think education is more important. Because athletics is Anyway, so it's now, I think it should be athletics. No, why do you say that? Uh, they gotta have some exercise. That helps them out a lot, you know. Now, this issue is expected to go before the school board next month. Currently, student athletes have every other day right now to practice their sport after class and their last period. Steve. All right, Isaiah Carey, thank you. The North Little Rock superintendent says expanding athletic practices to five days a week would cost the district $150,000 each year. The financial part of it at this time, uh, to do that, we would have to add four to five instructors and we're not able to do that. Dr. Smith says he will not support double blocking classes for athletics when it comes before the school board. Well, it took 30 tons of dynamite and enough dirt to cover a football field 10 stories high. But North Little Rock's newest medical center is nearing completion. Administrators say Baptist Memorial Medical Center is the new facility and it's equipped with extra features like more natural light and nursing stations outside every room. The facility is organized around patient-focused care, and that's different. What that means is that we take the services to the patient as opposed to the patient having to travel to the services. The new Baptist Memorial Medical Center opens this fall in North Little Rock. Meantime, a multi-million dollar health care center for seniors is coming to Northwest Arkansas. It's being paid for with a grant by the Schmiding Foundation. The new UAMS Center will be located in Springdale. The $3 million facility is set to open in the spring of 2001. Now, the grant also sets aside a half million dollars per programs at the facility over the next 20 years. Help wanted. It's a familiar cry from local business owners who say they are desperate for workers. News 4's Frederica Stiffen tells us about a labor shortage and how business is dealing with it. Frederica? Well, Steve, here in Pulaski County, the unemployment rate hasn't been more than 4.4% in a few years. That means, one, very few people are out of work, and two, big problems for employers. They're almost everywhere. Sign after sign after sign after sign. Businesses looking for employees with smiling faces to brighten or lighten their workload. Part-timers that wanted like normally 15 to 20, they were having to work like 25, and so they were having to work extra to cover. So it was hard on them. Okay. Tway says the store's been short-staffed for at least three months until they made this latest hire. I just came back to the state and I thought, oh gosh, it's gonna be so hard to get a job. But it totally wasn't. It was really easy. The State Employment Security Department indicates the unemployment rate in Little Rock, Pulaski County, and the four-county metro area, all rank at 3.5 percent. Those in the employment industry say shrinking unemployment rates are an increasing trend. It's harder to find the people, it's easier to find the jobs, uh, and normally it would be the other way around, or it has been for the past, you know, for the past 15 years or so. Now that trend is statewide, is statewide as well. In northwestern Arkansas, the unemployment rate is less than 3%. And many people who are looking for work are either not qualified for those positions that are available or overqualified. Steve? All right, Frederica, thank you. And Arkansas Corporation is climbing up the list of the nation's largest. Walmart now trails only General Motors and Ford. It's already passed Exxon and General Electric. Walmart had revenues of $139 billion last year. Closing arguments began Wednesday in the trial of Susan McDougall. Testimony ended today after lawyers for both sides questioned a prosecutor in McDougall's 1996 fraud trial. The prosecutor insisted Whitewater prosecutors were only searching for the truth and that McDougall was never pressured to implicate anyone. She's charged with contempt of court for refusing to testify before a grand jury. The Central High Visitor Center is honoring a woman who was vital in desegregating the school. Irene Samuel died last Saturday at age 84. She was among the founders of the Women's Emergency Committee, which fought to reopen Little Rock's public schools after they were closed to avoid integration. Um, she received intimidation, hate mail, threats. 
all kinds of uh, intimidation, and she was never afraid. She knew that their cause was the right one, and she did whatever she could to make it work. The Visitor Center will honor Mrs. Samuel with the memorial service later this month. Well, if you're thinking about getting a storm shelter to protect yourself from severe weather, it may not be as easy as you think. We'll have details coming up next. And the U.S. adds more muscle to the NATO mission in Kosovo. We'll have a live report. News 4, sponsored by Hanky Brothers Siding and Windows Incorporated, by Coleman Quality Check Dairy, by USA Drug, and by Sidney Moncrief. My brother Michael and I operate ARK-TV with Betsy Pilgrim, Steve Barnes, meteorologist Michelle Lee, and sports with Carlton Wing. Now, this is News 4 at 6. The severe weather season in Arkansas is up on us, and we all know how deadly the results can be. So when tornado sirens blow, many Arkansans head for the nearest shelter, if they have one. News Force newest member, Lyndall Stout, joins us now live from downtown Little Rock with a story. Lyndall? Betsy, dozens of people in and around Little Rock want a storm shelter of their own. They've even ordered them, but they won't be getting one anytime soon. The truck is ready, so are the concrete storm shelters. Mother Nature is causing the demand and the slowdowns. We haven't done very much the past week or two. Thompson Guillo and Charles Smith work for Sheridan Ready Mix. They say that even if the weather was cooperating, you would still have to wait a while to get one of these installed in your backyard. Well, we're talking about a backlog until about July or August right now. We've got quite a few on the list. Definitely better than being in your house. Well, we've had uh, 15 in one here before, you know, and uh, we probably could have got us some more in there. It just depends on how bad the storm is, <laughs> you know. Small but sturdy, the concrete shelters are six feet by eight and are about six feet high once you get inside. But unless the rain stops soon and the ground dries, you'll have to find a different shelter from this year's storms. Now, some people say that a typical storm shelter starts at about $1,600. Some people say that's a small price to pay to ensure the safety of your family. Betsy. Thank you, Lindell. Well, News 4 told you last week of another Central Arkansas plant closing. Jennifer Chuculate called Star TV 4 to report that the Fasco plant in Russellville is closing. For her efforts, she gets $25 in free airtime from Southwestern Bell. So remember, when you see news happening, call Star TV 4 and you could get some free airtime. Well, severe weather continued across Arkansas today. Meteorologist Jan John Champion is next. And later, Taylor Carr takes us to UALR for Sydney Moncrief's first day on the job. Stay tuned. Get more. And John Champion sitting in tonight. We got more of this to come? Well, this is the third day in a row. I think we've had about enough for the time being, and it looks like uh, as skies start to clear across western Arkansas, we're going to have a couple of nice days. I mean, absolutely gorgeous weather headed our way with sunny skies and temperatures in the 70s. So it looks like after we get through the storms that we have across the state tonight, conditions improving dramatically. And as we look at full one live Doppler radar, still a few folks seeing some problems tonight with thunderstorms moving through eastern sections of our state. Now, the severe thunderstorm warning we had in effect for Sharp County at the top of the hour has come to an end at 615. However, we still see some strong storms moving through both Prairie and Monroe counties. And we have a severe thunderstorm warning out for both of those counties. Storm track on that line lets you know that uh, Monroe, Marvell, Haynes, Forest City, and Mariana all in the path of that line of thunderstorms. You can expect some very gusty winds, possibly greater than 55 miles an hour. And we have had reports of uh, hail today, but most of it has been small, anywhere from pea to dime size hail scattered throughout central Arkansas as these storms pass through our area a little bit earlier. So again, this is the end of the storms. Once they exit the state within the next couple of hours, we've got smooth sailing for a couple of days. Let's go back to the maps now and let you know what's going on. Severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for about the eastern third of Arkansas until 8 o'clock tonight for those storms which are moving through both northeast and east central Arkansas at the present time. But here in the Little Rock area in points west, our threat of severe weather has come to an end. Temperatures across the state right now, well, out ahead of these showers and thunderstorms, very warm this afternoon, 80 at the top of the hour in West Memphis, but we've cooled down to 68 here in Little Rock, 64 in Hot Springs, and even a little bit of sunshine showing up from Fort Smith, Nabina. Temperatures being reported in the low 70s there. Our current conditions include cloudy skies, 68 degrees, dew point at 62 degrees, giving us a relative humidity of 81 percent. Pressure continues to climb as that cold front passes through central Arkansas. Winds still out of the southwest, but we'll be shifting around to the northwest later on this evening. Our high today in Little Rock, 75 degrees, a few degrees above what, what you would expect for this time of the year. This morning's low at 63, but uh, 
Tomorrow morning's lows here in central Arkansas will be in the lower 50s, so some very comfortable weather headed in our direction. Rainfall from the Weather Service in North Little Rock, just a little more than a third of an inch. The current situation across the midsection of the country shows that frontal system. It's just one in a series of frontal systems that's been moving across the midsection of the country, spawning showers and thunderstorms. These thunderstorms continue into parts of Iowa, and they are seeing some severe weather there. But look back to the west. Nice conditions for Oklahoma and Texas today. That all moves in our direction for tomorrow. A drier day and sunny conditions as well. However, there is another storm system back out here to the west. It will be affecting us by Thursday into Friday. The forecast for tonight now. 54 degrees, your Little Rock low, and a 50% chance of showers. And maybe a few thunderstorms over in eastern Arkansas. Otherwise, clearing and cooler tonight. Forecast for tomorrow looks gorgeous. Sunny skies, dry and mild. High temperature of 73 degrees with northwest winds at 10 miles an hour. Your week-long forecast, more great weather, except for Thursday and Friday when we were talking about more showers and a few thunderstorms in there as well. Four-degree guarantee for today is 78, and we'll check that out for you tonight at 10 o'clock. So we'll get these storms out of here and have some great weather for a couple of days. I think right. we can handle that. I think so. <laughs> Thanks, John. Right. Thanks, John. NATO bombing increasing in intensity, and in a moment we'll have a live report on increased American involvement in Kosovo. Does dieting feel like a game you just can't win? Does your hunger force you to surrender to fattening temptations? If your diet feels out of control, you're not alone. That's why over a million people turn to Metabolife. Metabolife is the only herbal dietary supplement clinically tested for safety and shown to be effective for weight loss. Look for the Metabolife cart at most major malls. There's only one Metabolife. You're watching Arkansas's News 4, where the news comes first. NATO forces continue to pressure the Serbs. Bombing runs have damaged roads, fueling stations, army barracks, and a television tower. The U.S. announced today it will provide two dozen Apache attack helicopters, plus ground missile launchers and support troops. So will ground troops accompany the Apache helicopters? Well, News Force Jim Hanchett has been following today's activities and joins us now live from Washington. Jim, we understand there's some action underway even as we speak, correct? Uh, Steve, monitoring Serb TV from here in Washington, and it is clear the NATO forces are out tonight. Uh, the weather has cleared over Kosovo and Serbia, and it is an ideal night for the work uh, those pilots must do. Uh, we're seeing pictures now of an oil refinery in the city of Novi Sad that apparently has been uh, struck. It is up in flames. Uh, several tanks on the ground in Kosovo also have been hit, uh, according to several wire reports. So a busy night over there, Steve. Okay, Jim, any update now on the three prisoners of war? Uh, nothing uh, substantially new. Uh, the uh, Serbs seem to be backing off their intention to try those men. They say they'll be well cared for. Uh, they'll be returned to the states as soon as the conflict is over. Steve? And, and the issue that everybody keeps coming back to, ground forces, ground troops, NATO, and presumably with Americans in there. Uh, no indication of that, no movement towards that today, although the U.S. is committing 24 Apache uh, tank-busting helicopters. Uh, it'll take seven to ten days for those helicopters to get into place. They carry with them uh, hundreds of technicians and mechanics, people that will be very close to the front, uh, but we're told again by the Pentagon today that uh, helicopters, yes, ground troops, no. Steve? All right, Jim Hanchett in Washington, thank you. A new head coach takes over the Trojans. Taylor Carr will have details of Sidney Moncrief's first day coming up. And he'll answer tonight's trivia question, which team had the best record in spring training? Arkansas Millennium Moments, brought to you by your local Dodge dealers. Hi, I'm Michelle Lee with another Arkansas Millennium Moment. During the summer of 1926, weeks of heavy rains caused the Mississippi, Arkansas, and other state rivers to rise. By April 1927, over 4.2 million acres of land were underwater. The Great Flood of 1927 turned the streets of many Arkansas cities into rivers. Sadly, 127 people drowned in what President Herbert Hoover called the greatest peacetime disaster in our history. Well, the South loves trucks, it's all there is to it. For work or play, just get out and do it. The truck stop of the New South. The New Dodge. The truck stop of the New South. And the Dodge Rams are overall America's most powerful line of full-size pickups, the longest lasting. And Ram quad cabs were the first to offer four doors. Just imagine the possibilities that opens up. The truck stop of the New South. Ram the truck stop of the New South. The New Dodge. 
Coleman Dairy has always strived to provide you with a wide variety of milk choices in all shapes and sizes to meet your needs. And most recently, we colored your world with the light safe yellow jug. You've reached for the gallon and the half gallon, and now another favorite flavor saver size, the plastic quart. It's small, reusable, convenient, and ready to go. And now all we need is a name. And how about Squatty Body? There you go, Coleman Squatty Body, the new squat quart. And big first day on the job. That's always the scary thing, I think. But I think he's going to enjoy it. Sidney Moncrief. It doesn't sound right. Coach Moncrief, you know? Sounds great to me. Oh, he's getting you. We'll <laughs> see how it fits. Yeah, yeah really. And Sidney Moncrief, in fact, told me today it might take 20 years to get used to hearing Coach Moncrief. 20 years. Maybe Sid is thinking like a, a long-term job is what he has now. Sidney has been hitting the books to get ready. This is the NCAA recruiting manual he had to read. He was tested on it today. Now when he passes that, he can recruit off campus. I asked Coach Moncrief what will be his toughest thing about the new job. Well, I don't know. I think the recruiting, just trying to get a good feel for the type of players that we're going to be able to get into our system. Uh, I think they're I took the test today, the recruiting test. I think part of the adjustment will be getting used to the rules and regulations as it relates to the NCAA. Uh, the coaching part, I don't think, will be uh, as much of an adjustment, but I think the rules and regulations will be. The new coach has been so busy, he's had no time to put anything on the walls of Wimp Sanderson's old office. He says the Trojans should sign a player or two in the National Signing Day period on Wednesday. All right, what's the best way to start the baseball season? Just like the Detroit Tigers did with a leadoff home run today. The Tigers were facing the Rangers at the ballpark when Juan Encarnacion hit the first pitch into the seats for a memorable start for the Tigers season. Detroit would go on to lead 11-0 before the Rangers managed to score. Brian Moeller took a no-hitter to the seventh, and the Tigers won the game 11-5. The Cincinnati Reds used to always play the season's first game. Television has changed that. Their opponent today, the Giants, who get a tough break in the first inning when Bill Muller pulls something, he had to leave the game. They come right back with a base hit by J.T. Snow. It scores Barry Bonds and Jeff Kent for a 3-0 Giant lead. Traveler fans remember Dimitri Young. He's in right field for the Red, and he makes a nice throw to get Rich Arulia at the plate. Giants go on to win the game. Ah, got him at the plate, 11-8. These scores in from the big leagues. Arizona leads L.A. 6-3 in the ninth. Florida beats the, leads the Mets 5-1 in the eighth. Also in the National League, Philly beats Atlanta 7-4. The Cardinals in Milwaukee are scoreless right now. In the American, Detroit 11 and Texas 5. Baltimore beats Tampa Bay 10-7. And Boston beats Kansas City 5-3. Tonight's trivia question uh, is, on a, is on baseball. And to spring training, what is the team with the best record in spring training? The answer, the Kansas City Royals, they had 22, 22 exhibition wins. There's some good college golf going on in Arkansas. It's being played in the capital city, hosted by UALR. It's the <coughs> Trojans, the host team for the collegiate, collegiate championship, featuring 15 teams. UALR's Daniel Fox to the par 3 17th, and UALR's Mitch Beaver with a putt for birdie. He made the par and is, three, and is third overall. Leading the tournament is Trojan junior Jamie Sime, who shot a 468. Sime and Beaver actually competing apart from the team, but UALR still leads the tournament by five shots over northeast Louisiana. Cardinal highlights tonight on News 4 at 10 o'clock. We'll be watching. Thanks, Taylor. In a moment, we'll have a final check of your weather and a look ahead to 10. Well, the South loves trucks, it's all there is to it. For work or play, just get out and do it. The truck stop of the New South. The new Dodge. The truck stop of the New South and the Lima. Dodge Rams are overall America's most powerful line of full-size pickups, the longest lasting. And Ram quad cabs were the first to offer four doors. Just imagine the possibilities that opens up. The truck stop of the New South and the Lima. The truck stop of the New South. The new Dodge. With new homes these days, residential builders include the things you're looking for, like spacious kitchens with raised panel cabinetry, custom-built fireplaces, soothing spa tubs, tilt-in insulated windows, and top-quality exteriors. What you have just seen is not a residential house. It is actually a Rainbow Manufactured Home, one of many on display at Rainbow Homes. So come on in and find your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's Rainbow Homes in Conway and Little Rock. This is Sarah. Like most young people her age, she's planning for her future. And Sarah is planning smart. Through Arkansas's career opportunities, she is job shadowing to learn about the real world of work. Now I know more about a possible career. And my dad's proud of me too. 
You know, you don't have to be a governor's daughter to participate. All Arkansas students are eligible. So just call your high school counselor or Arkansas Career Opportunities. Closed captioning for the hearing impaired is brought to you by Freedom Financial Services of Arkansas. Long John Silver's famous variety platters. Four bountiful combinations of hand-battered fish with shrimp, chicken, or clams, plus fixins. Long John Silver's can't resist that crunchy stuff. Let's get a final check of our weather now from meteorologist John Champion. John? All right, Betsy, let's go ahead and take a look at full and live drop Doppler radar. Still a couple of severe thunderstorms out there. Severe thunderstorm warning, which is in effect, uh, continues now for Monroe County with this particular storm right now, right on top of the Brinkley area. Now a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Arkansas County. You folks in Stuttgart, watch out. This storm is heading in your direction. Expect some very gusty winds and possibly some small hail as well. We'll have a complete update on the day in severe weather tonight at 10 o'clock. All right. Thanks, John. Right, and that'll do it for News 4 at 6. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good, safe night. You're watching KARK TV. I'll also show you the destruction left in the wake of a...